Uh, this video was taken on uh, September 3rd, uh, 2020. Uh, this is a little cider shack out in the valley up near Pope Patty in, in the, the mountains. Next slide or so, uh, kind of, well, of course, you have to get the apples. These happen to be picked up from, uh, from Way Fruit Farm uh, early that morning. As a, a quick preview uh, through this, this is the actual press itself, where the center is the pressing mechanism, and on the right-hand side is where they have these nylon blankets that capture the uh, the uh, ground up apples for the actual pressing itself. Um, the uh, the press itself is uh, 150 years old. Um, it's a hydraulic press uh, com manufacturing company. It's in Mount Gilead, Ohio, and it was a company established in uh, 1877. Um, where the next video just shows kind of how it works. It's a bear belt that kind of drags them up into the uh, into the facility and uh, from here uh, of course it comes down to kind of a view of, of the uh, flywheel in the front foreground here that actually operates the press you'll be seeing in a minute uh, some additional videos here that give you an idea this one actually goes through a progression of the uh, material coming down the, the ground the apples coming down through the chute uh, from the hammer mill, which is up, up above, and the um, conveyor, which drags the apples up to and through the, uh, uh, through the hammer mill itself. Um, so inside here, these are hammer mills. So when it spins around in a circle, those blades come out and uh, have a, a high, high speed uh, to, to really bust them open quick. The uh, this was uh, actually was a retrofit. The original um, version uh, this did not use. It was probably more than like an auger type grinder as opposed to a hammer mill. It was an upgrade, shall we say, at, at some point. And and the next little video kind of walks through um, the actual uh, you know, material coming down and then a visual up into the overhead. A hammer mill shoot come coming from the actual conveyor and so forth uh, it's, itself. Um, what happens is, is that as uh, that those big nylon blankets fill up in these uh, three by three uh, squares that they'll be pressing on, uh, they stack on, they wrap it on up, and then they put another thing of slats and uh, and then another frame, and then that frame is you know a depth of a couple of inches of the ground apples on each of the of the layers uh, between the pressing. Uh, this this next slide is actually the final. The the grinders now off and conveyors and so forth, and they're sort of leveling out the unit for the final placement uh, over into the press. You can actually see ciders already, of course, dripping out on the bottom before the, uh, the press is actually uh, is, is applied. Um, the next uh, group here is, is where it's the, the material is actually moved over uh, into the, the press uh, from the, uh, the staging area there. Uh, is then blocked on the top. What you'll see is that the press is actually not pulling down. It's actually a hydraulic from underneath. So it's going to be pressing up onto this uh, with a uh, pressure of about, of about 14 uh, tons. Next series here of that actually uh, gives you an idea of uh, the final, final placement and so forth of, of the blocks for that then they actually initiate uh, the operation then of the uh, of the press itself. You can see he's actually uh, setting up for the actual hydraulics, and uh, the next one actually is you know the flywheel's now running. Uh, it turns out this I'll say some other things about the how this used to be run, but now it's certainly just a simple half horsepower motor that is enough to run the flywheel. And that flywheel then applies uh, the, uh, the hydraulic pressure from below. Uh, some additional uh, video here shows uh, more of a close-up of the actual hydraulic piston being driven um, by the unit. Um, and then that uh, piston uh, gives rise to the uh, rise of the hydraulic from underneath the, the unit. It's pushing it up here. 
And then uh, ultimately, you can actually see that in the back there, the, the cider running into the reservoir. Okay, so then basically the hydraulic fluid then from inside here then kicks kicks uh, kicks into the into the here. Yeah. Ah, so that's food grade hydraulic fluid. It is not. No, it's not. You don't need to. Oh, it doesn't touch food. You're right. I use food grade in the bearings all above. You know, and here this next video kind of gives a little bit of an explanation of how the pressure regulator works. This is really slick on how um, the pressure uh, based on that little valve, a one-way valve there, controlled by a weight uh, and associated uh, uh, hydraulic fluid, uh, gives rise to that that pressure. Uh, and um, it's a, a really ingenious uh, approach to um, you know something. Keeping in mind, this is uh, long before electricity and uh, most mechanical mechanisms that you have for control. And here, 150 years later, that pressure regulation is still is still functioning. Um, uh, that, of course, drives up. This is just a slow that shows that you see, you know, it's it's pushing up. And so what happens is when it reaches a, a certain pressure, in this, or in this case, uh, the force of, uh, of, of 14 tons, um, then it blows the hydraulic fluid rather going into the cylinder, pushing this up, uh, bypasses in the recirculation loop, and that maintains the, uh, the actual pressure during, uh, during the, uh, the press it, itself. Of uh, of course, the the goal of the um, cider press is to is to produce uh, cider, and so uh, in this slides here, you can see that large flow of the uh, cider coming down uh, out of the press table and into the uh, collection tank uh, underneath. It's old technology that I almost understand. <laughs> Understand where it's going. Now, so, if we squeezed all the juice out, what, what's going to be left? Apple sauce. Yes, Paul. <laughs> Not even apple sauce. Yeah, I know. Really dry apple sauce. <laughs> so, what's the? How much is the volume down here? How much can you press in one pressing? Well, we used to press whenever this was a little higher. I think 40 gallons up above here and 60 gallons down below so you could actually pull 100 gallons at a time. But that depends upon how, how level that floor is in the building. <laughs> so it's it's kind of settle over. Yeah, I've had to rebuild this front. And, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, if you see that this, this next slide actually shows uh, what's say called a well, it's, it's the flywheels, but there's a there's two of them here, and if you see this video, they they, they move independently. It's because the one on the the left hand side is actually being driven at the moment. It's being driven by um, the, the uh, half horsepower pump on top, but the uh, uh, historically this was actually run off of a belt drive that went to a fl uh, an additional wheel outside, run off of a, a tractor, for example, and so um, the one on the right in the image you see here is is actually referred to as an idler uh, flywheel and the reason is you kick essentially the leather strap off the uh, the pressure producing pump and onto the idler wheel so that it was no it basically it continues to run and spin but it's not actually engaged with the uh, the driving pump on the on the bottom um, this next image is actually uh, the guy was uh, showing me some of the things, technologies that have changed. The original gaskets on the uh, pressure uh, were very similar to the gaskets, uh, were made out of carbon, uh, graphite, uh, which is similar to what uh, graphite uh, that I described for <coughs> the bearings for the uh, drive shafts for uh, uh, modern uh, fermenter. Um, in this case, they now use a uh, a, this is a woven uh, silicone uh, of some sort that is actually the the basis of providing the uh, pump back pressure of the uh, hydraulic fluid to the uh, to the pump itself. Um, next image here then is uh, shows you the the uh, product. It <laughs> looks a lot like filling uh, a gas and uh, uh, from the uh, the reserve tank. Uh, down into the actual uh, cider vessels themselves.
Here you can see the comes down to the, uh, the filling operation. So you see down here, outside. <laughs> and so you got quite a, just like filling up the tank, shall we say. Uh, once the uh, press is finished and they release the pressure, then they roll it on forward by taking off the blocking and so forth. And uh, what you can see here is that uh, the material that's produced is an awful lot like cardboard. Uh, there's very little liquid at all uh, left in it. It's actually, uh, you can chew on it, it tastes a little bit obviously like apples, but it's amazing how much of the liquid they managed to press out of that. Um, and this material is actually, um, uh, in this case, is just simply placed in where where animals can get access to it because deer and squirrels and such will um, will eat that. Next series of slides, actually, uh, I think uh, uh, you can appreciate this is sort of a, a pretty big device that has to be uh, clean in place. And so there's a couple of you know, quick uh, little things here kind of showing the process. And in fact, the, the cleaning in place is what really shows the amount of effort <laughs> required to, to do this. It's, it's far more than the actual uh, pressing per se, because an awful lot of this has to be uh, extensively cleaned. It took several hours even with us helping in, uh, in various ways of doing it. It's obviously uh, wood, uh, particularly oak and things like elm contain tannins, they're antimicrobial by nature, uh, and that's actually an advantage, obviously, then to um, providing sanitation, even though it may not look aesthetically like uh, plastic. We're used to thinking in terms of, of clean materials. Um, it was actually a, a, a better scenario to be working with the wood slats, and so they're actually now approved in, in for this type of an operation. Uh, uh, to go back to, shall we say, using the original approach to uh, the pressing with uh, the wooden slats instead of uh, the plastics. Um, all of these materials, these are, are very thick uh, uh, nylon sheets. I think you said they cost about $80 to, $80 to $100 a piece. Um, and these are actually power washed, uh, down, flipped, power washed again. Uh, to uh, get them uh, pretty much free of the uh, any residual uh, uh, sugar for sure and, and and plant debris as well and other aspects so this next slide kind of starts from the top top to bottom that's uh, my son up in the in the top where the hammer mill is and this the movie goes on down and shows, shows the uh, you know, the chute and, and so forth uh, on down where you literally start at the top and uh, you make your way down kind of washing and brushing and, and cleaning all the materials here and uh, you know this entire area has to be kind of mopped uh, not mopped but brushed and then then sprayed down uh, to get rid of or uh, push this out and I think the main the main role besides sanitary it also kind of keeps out um, the uh, let's say the wildlife um, you know as the materials you know, kind of flush down through the system uh, it's all then redirected to uh, essentially uh, to various strains and so forth to um, clean out uh, up, up the uh, the material uh, the last slide here is just simply again a reminder of what this facility is it's more of a a testament or, or uh, to the sort of the history and uh, of, of this, if you will, an art uh, of producing the uh, the apple cider, which from there um, is not pasteurized, uh, but it goes forward. People can do the processing that they want, including uh, fermentation, which will produce uh, alcohol, which is obviously anti. Uh, microbial as as well. Um, so that that concludes the uh, the the tour, and I hope you can appreciate uh, the next uh, drink of cider that you have, especially if it's uh, fresh cider and something. Thanks. Bye.